next speaker mr shanmuga kumar who is an alumnus from regional institute of ophthalmology and as well uh, shankar netralaya uh, he is going to talk about independent practice opportunities in the semi urban and rural area so in continuation with the talk of uh, private practices uh, the first talk we had was in an urban setup um and now following rekhi sir we have uh, mr shanmugam kumar sir who is an optometrist who is practicing um in i would call it a semi urban or a rural area um i i think it is very interesting to listen to his experiences as well thank you rekhi sir for uh, found there are a lot of patients with having severe eye problems with untreated so because of non accessibility to get primary eye care facilities due to unequal distribution of our eye care practitioners they not having enough facility to access lot of optometrists practicing one day in metros and city sites very few are practicing in rural area india is the nation where um, our 70 percentage of people living in rural areas also our rural economy uh, contributes half of the nation income so it has a great potential to practicing as a primary i care practitioner in rural uh, and semi urban regions so i decided to practice my own native itself because if you want to go a tertiary i center from my native it took about 2 hours journey so i planned and start my independent practice in my rural area called sorandai around 13 years back i got a successful practice uh, around 13 years so i just sharing my knowledge with you all uh, if you want to practice as a primary care practitioner in rural area uh, what you need to start approximate budget around 8 to 10 lakhs it's enough to uh, start here like optometric clinic in rural areas 250 square feet approximately we need it uh, which is about 100 square feet clinical area alone at least you need to have a two supportive staff to maintain your clinic well and good as well as assisting yourself what are the advantages you are getting when you are practicing rural area so when you are practicing in um, your hometown will be highly beneficial because the area where you born you grow up will be the better one to practice compared to um, others you know that your area very well in and out and its surrounding for example if you are a cricket fan you know how difficult a cricket team like uh, beat their home ground like that your area your native will be your strength also less competition when you are practicing in rural and semi urban region there are no big eye hospitals there are no corporate chain of optical showrooms so you can have less competition you can practice with your own way without making any compromises also you have very less operating costs here the rental manpower other expenses are very less compared to city sites so you can have more revenue and more profit by reducing your operating costs uh, i want to share my own experience in covid side time so we have managed uh, without any big uh, trouble because of uh, this uh, less operating costs 
lot of uh, individual practitioners in city sites and metro sites they have closed their showrooms because of high operating cost. So there is a minimal risk when you are having practicing in a rural area. So uh, even though your business was less, you cannot uh, uh, um, you, are, you can practice without any big trouble. So minimal risk was here to practicing as a optometrist in rural area. Also, you can gain more job satisfaction. Where we are practicing here is the needed place for primary eye care. So, a uh, few years back, uh, on Diwali time, a grandma um, bring his grands, her grandson around 9, 9 o'clock, was found that there is a cracker's injury and uh, total high fever with the corneal epithelial damage. There is no transportation at the night time to reach the tertiary eye center. We had a eye teleconsultation facility with us. So we had a tie-up with an ophthalmologist. So we um, we connect with an ophthalmologist and uh, get the guidelines from them and uh, given first aid to him. The next day morning, we refer to the consul ophthalmologist. After three weeks of follow he gained the vision from HM plus 2, 6 by 6 partial. So that is the day we found a proud moment in my life to practicing as a optometrist. So we are practicing where the needed for primary care. Also, uh, what are the challenges we have come across? Reaching an optometry uh, in the area it's a big task for us. Practically speaking, in my initial days, um, here there is no awareness about optometry. So, a lot of people thinking that we were only optician, we were only doing refraction and uh, uh, dispensing glasses. But um, once they come enter to our clinic, then only they come to know we were. Um, doing eye examination, we are the eligible person to do the uh, all eye uh, visual function test everything. So it took about three years to getting repeat customers for us. So it will um, also upgrading your practice. Only dispensing and refraction is not enough to practicing in semi-urban rural areas, you need to have a complete eye care setup. Like you have to do um, donometry, donoscopy, visual field test and fundus evaluations. We had a fundus eval a camera to evaluate fundus. We had all uh, equipments to evaluate glaucoma evaluation and uh, pediatric evaluation. We have a tie-up with an ophthalmologist, so we are doing uh, pediatric evaluation as well as ROP checkup uh, for premature baby. So this is the big task for us to upgrade my practice. If you want to upgrade your practice, you need to have a financial support too. So uh, if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you should know the financial management too. So uh, 10 years back, I uh, tried to get a loan from a bank. I was step into 100 times to getting so uh, to uh, make the relevant documents uh, it took about three months time so now i regularly maintain all relevant documents to get the notes and everything all papers are up to date uh, so that i can arrange a loan within three to four days so also updating your knowledge is a big uh, updating your knowledge is uh, important thing to update your practice. Once you come out from your college, conferences or online seminars are the only way to update your knowledge. So all conferences are conducting in Chennai, uh, big cities like that. So we are the south corner of Tamil Nadu. If you want to uh, go a conference in Chennai. So it took about three days, oh, sorry, two days or uh, uh, 5,000 rupees uh, I have to spend to teach that. So nowadays, almost online conferences, online seminars are there. 
uh, to update our knowledge. So we are utilizing the uh, online com conferences, online seminars like this. So um, my take home message is lot of potential available in rural and semi-urban area. Utilize the potentiality. Um, if you want to become a successful entrepreneur, you should know the need uh, of people. So if you fulfill their need, you will be get successful practice. So I request all uh, upcoming young practitioners like you uh, first learn good uh, proper eye from my proper eye hospital and learn everything uh, at least five years working experience and then you come to practice with your individual practice uh, in rural and semi-urban area. I wish you all a very successful practice in future. Uh, all the best for upcoming practitioners. Thank you so much for giving me a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Charanya Madam, and thank you, Dr. Gopinath. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, sir, I think we should say thank you for joining us. Uh, it, it was a wonderful uh, introduction to practicing in a uh, semi-urban or a rural um, sort of, you know, background. Uh, I think it is summed up beautifully by Saravanan. He says, it's always a great feel to have good food uh, from your mother. That's how practicing in the hometown is, giving back to the community that brought you up. Um, so we have a couple of questions for you, sir. One of the um, how much do you charge for the consultation? How many optometrists supporting staff in your practice? And how did you start and how are you having your practice set up now? So, um, I charge a consultation fees uh, as 50 rupees. So, it's a nominal cost for the rural and semi urban area. So, apart from the. Sir, the hospital, you charge hospital? 150 rupees, madam. So, like comparatively, they should know. Like, uh, yes, of course. So, in a nearby hospital, around 150 rupees, they have charged. I have charged around 50 rupees for consultation. If we do do a further test, like uh, we do, uh, we are doing uh, fundus uh, evaluations. So, uh, dilatation fundus evaluations, so we are charging around 300 rupees. Fundus camera, we have fundus camera. So, if uh, the needed patient, suppose uh, we, uh, we need to have evaluate uh, diabetic retinopathy or the high myopic patients, or particularly anybody having uh, retinal uh, problems, so we uh, put dilatations and the dilated uh, fundus evaluation, we charge around 300 rupees. Also, we had a uh, visual field test. And uh, for that, uh, we are uh, charging around 100 rupees. Also, we are uh, having CMS test and bonioscopy evaluation. For those, we are charging around uh, 50 rupees. It generates my uh, revenue and getting more profitability. So, we are having extra testers apart from refraction, all those things. So, we, have, we can charge them. So, they, uh, initially, uh, it's a bit uh, difficult to explain the patient uh, to getting a professional fee. But uh, there, I, everybody is uh, doing free eye testing. But uh, I am charging that. So, I have explained the polite way what we are making the difference from others. Then they realize the fact. Then uh, they have uh, given the fee with full satisfaction. Also, uh, I'm really, really happy that you charge for the eye test because I think the value is in the knowledge and the know-how that we give in. So, um, excellent, uh, you know, sort of uh, initiative for actually charging your patients. I really appreciate. That. Thank you, madam. Also, I I had a three supportive as uh, optomes for me as well as uh, four uh, sales uh, persons for uh, supporting myself, madam. So we are the eight members team. So we are uh, having a full optometric clinic over here. So, so we started around uh, 250 square feet in initial days. So now it's around 1000 square feet of uh, showroom with three floors. So bottom oh, wow. is uh, dispensing area and uh, first floor is uh, two clinical setup with waiting hall and restroom everything. And the third floor is the fitting lab with the uh, uh, staff rooms and everything will be there. So essentially, eye care services under one roof. Of course, ma'am. 
Um, so there's one more question. Uh, they've asked whether you have a medical records uh, department set up. Do you do you keep the case sheets? Yes, uh, we are. Yes, yes, we are. We are not keeping any case sheets. We have a, a software to maintain our all old records. So every patients who are come enter into us. So we have the reception. We, they have the proper entry of like the, we have the following the systems. So like uh, uh, um, patient entry and registration, then kept into the waiting hall, and then doing the refraction and uh, proper evaluations will be there, and then we can go for the dispensing or proper counseling to them. So uh, likewise, we have a system of process. So all patients we are keeping record without uh, record, no patients go out. So we have a software for separate software for that. So we maintain all records. Um, couple of interesting questions. Uh, one is, uh, how do you create awareness of branded lenses and frames uh, in terms of dispensing spectacles for patients in the rural areas? Wow. So, uh, uh, frankly speaking, so rural area when the army is there, you can see it. But they are more aware than us. So they are telling, uh, recent days, one of uh, my uh, patient asking about smile procedure. So I have explained about smile procedure. And then uh, uh, he, uh, he said, how much cost it will be? Sir, uh, it will be around, come around 1.2 lakhs. Uh, no, sir, I have heard about 1.5 lakhs. So you are telling less than that. So we think that uh, the rural people doesn't know uh, anything, but they have the knowledge because here, the people who are here, they are uh, practicing in uh, IT people or uh, uh, software engineers and doctors in uh, city sites. So the, the rural area is um, much uh, aware about eye care. Uh, nowadays, they developed a lot. So initial days, um, um, I have creating awareness about optometry. Nowadays, uh, all of my surroundings, uh, nearly uh, more than 30 students are uh, doing optometry courses and oh, working. Wow. Amazing. In my medicine, yes. No, that's amazing. That, that really shows the penetration of, uh, you know, how much people have uh, sort of understood what optometrists can do. That's really amazing, sir. Um, so that actually answers your, the next question that you have. How do you uh, make them aware and explain about the importance of eye care in rural areas? And how do you do the follow-ups? So, uh, so I think they're talking about patient compliance and uh, awareness, sir. Sorry, I couldn't get you, madam. I, I think they're talking about patient compliance. Uh, do they come back for regular follow-ups? Do they do all that? And how do you make sure that they actually do it? Um, so we had records and uh, we, we uh, will follow up with, uh, we had a uh, uh, software. So that itself, it uh, shows that review patients every day morning, we will see that. So review patients, what are the review patients should come. So we make the call to them. Uh, so today is your review date or today is eye examination date. So you can come and uh, have an eye checkup. But uh, here, the lack of awareness about I, as well as their financial status. Um, if we call 10 people, uh, out of 10, 4 will come. Balance 6, uh, they skip the follow-up visits. Frankly speaking, that uh, uh, if you call 10 people, 4 will definitely come. Yeah. Reiki, sir, the same question to you. Uh, you know, how, how, do, how does the follow-up system work uh, in, in the clinic? with you do they all turn up as well or so uh, many years ago what we had we had a very interesting follow up system earlier we don't have that now so i had a postcard uh, ah. which had a tear off slip and which used to go into our file and what we did was we actually got the patient to write his own name and address ah. and we used to store this postcard with a scheduled appointment even if it was one year later it was a scheduled appointment and this really worked very well with high net worth individuals because a lot of junk mail comes so when his secretary would receive a postcard in his own handwriting they would immediately put it on the top of the pipe so a lot of them actually called me and said you know this is a very interesting thing that you're doing it's a great reminder system so the reason there were two reasons we did this one was to say that 
we are helping to remind you you wanted us to remind you it's not that we are calling you to solicit business nice. it is business that was done one year ago and we told you you need a one year follow up and you have committed to being reminded for an eye check it was a interesting follow up the problem was that about 10 years into it we had patients who actually came and blasted us because we had posted the cards and it had reached them it's ridiculous it happens sometimes the post guy <laughs> would just not put it on or a courier guy would not send it so uh, that is it so for us actually most of our follow ups when it is a critical follow up we have uh, people who call up today and remind them or sometimes patients that send and say you know can you remind me 6 months later so in our calendar system we have a reminder the girls in form and for us i would say almost 90% of our patients come back to us so i we pretty much on time to follow up um so i think the awareness level is what makes a difference and uh... I think it's more your communication with the patient. If they are made aware of why you're calling them back, it the seriousness of it actually gets it. And 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 most people are actually quite aware of healthcare today. They want to be healthy. True, true. And you follow an MRD system as well, sir? Yes, we do. I tried getting online, but I wasn't happy with the system. We almost spent one year and lacks of money trying to develop a system. I'm still very happy with my. uh handwritten notes i still have it i think i have a couple of files here so i've got files like this that i keep which has a patient tag and everything and all my documents are inside it okay so there's another question which has just popped up on screen uh dilation in private practice can we dilate yeah, i do it i've got it all through but yes i have equipment by which i can see without dilating so unless i actually see something that warrants a dilation today i would say more than 70 80% of our patients we don't dilate because right. i can see 80% of the retina without dilating so we have indirect ophthalmoscopes which are for small pupils i use actually I rarely use my indirect now i use only for a myopic patient we do it mm-hmm. and i use a, a super 60 60 lens today and i find that yeah. very very convenient as long as the pupil is 2 to 1/2 mm you can see quite a lot right right thank you thank you so much um so thank you uh, sir shanmu kumar sir thank you so much for joining us as well uh, great insights on private practice both in the urban and rural setups um I, your wonderful inputs